I am so happy and proud to be with you in this little spread uh, spreadsheet program. Today we are going to learn how to use table slicers with the latest Pivot by function in Excel. So when I am recording this video, today it is 27th of September 2024 and uh, just 4 days before 23rd September 2024, Microsoft has released two new functions Pivot by and Group by for general public. Previously it was available only for office insiders. But today they have released for general public. So if you have not downloaded this Pivot by function or updated Excel, please do it. Pivot by function may not be a replacement for Pivot tables. But for regular reports that we are preparing by using Pivot tables, I think Pivot by function may be really useful for uh, all the people. There are n number of tutorials available in the YouTube for this Pivot by function by so many authors. So today I am going to talk only about how to use the table slicers with pivot by function. So I have some data here. Let me convert to a table. So once I press control T, it is being converted to a table. Since it is an order table from our sample superstore data, I am going to give the name as order. So you know that for tables we can add slicers. For example, I can go to table design. I am clicking this insert slicer, I am adding slicers for shipping mode and segment. Once I press OK, I am getting the slicers here. So if I click on first class, I am getting only first class data. And if I get consumer, I am getting only consumer data. That's good. But if I apply for pivot by, whether it is working by default, no. <coughs> because pivot by function as it is, it is calculating on the entire table, not on the sliced table. So first of all, let us write a very simple formula in Pivot by. I go to a new sheet. I am going to write a new formula using Pivot by function, an amazing function introduced by Microsoft. This particular feature is available from 2409 version of Excel. So equal to Pivot by. When I am using Pivot by function, it is asking about row fields, column fields, values, function. Four parameters are compulsory. What are the row fields? What are the column fields? Which value you want to summarize? And what kind of summarized function you are going to use? These are the four parameters. Okay, let us create a formula. So, pivot by order table region. Let us say region wise, category wise, sales total. So, order table region is my row field, and order table category is my column field, and let us say order table sales is my summarizing value column and then what do you want to do i want to do sum so that is the first function so let us select the sum if i press enter so now we are getting a simple pivot table that's really very nice so the advantage of using pivot by instead of pivot table is very simple Whenever I am updating the table, I need not refresh the pivot table. For regularly using any reports and all, we can use this function. So let me give the formula text for you. So this is the formula we have used. Now let me bring this table slicers to this page. So if I cut this table slicers and I am putting it nearby the pivot by formula. If I slice here, nothing is changing. So why it is not changing as I have told already. So pivot table is calculated on an entire table. How to use the slicers in this case. So if I have used the slicers then I can prepare a wonderful dashboard even without the pivot table. So let me go to my first sheet where we have two methods to do it. One is using a helper column. We can use a helper column to identify which rows are sliced which rows are not sliced. For that we are going to use subtotal function. So let me go to data. So I am adding a column called include where I am writing this formula. We can use any column to verify. So equal to if subtotal function I am using. We have to use count a because it can count any value whether it is a number or it is a text whatever it is. So that's why using count a function here. I am going to refer the current row current row any column. So I am going to refer the current row row id. So current row row id I can, I can select like this. Once I have selected the current row row id, you can see the formula becomes as at row id. At stands for current record. So whether the current record is count available. So if I say close the bracket, if it is greater than 0, 
That means it is available. So let us say true. Otherwise, I want false. So now, as of now, everything will be true because they are all available. After adding this include column, I go to this place. I am going to type equal to order table include so that we want to see what are the values. Now we can see all of them are true, but if I click same day, you can see that most of them are false. If I select second class, some of them are true. So standard class, only standard class are true. So this will be very much useful to identify which particular rows are seen, which particular rows are not seen. So this I am going to use inside our pivot table. So let us try to write the new formula now. I am going to slightly change our formula using the helper column. So let me remove this formula. Let us write this formula equal to pivot by same order table region and then order table category and then I want summarizing order table sales and I want this sum. That is okay. So we are going to use the tenth parameter which is the filter array. So let us say comma, 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 comma until it becomes the filter array. What I want to filter or which I want to use it as the filter, since we are having the entire column as true or false, we can straight away use that column which is our helper column. So order table include. So which are the rows I want to include that I am going to include. Now also the same pivot table comes but along with slicer. So if I click first class, I am getting only first class data. So I can say first class same day corporate and home office. So any particular slicer we can use is a really an interesting feature. So this is the first method we can make use of a helper column to identify which rows are included, which rows are not included. Now I am going to talk about the second method which is without a helper column keeping the original source data intact. How to create this helper column dynamically inside this formula and then we are going to use it. Here I am going to use by row lambda function also. So equal to pi word by. So what I want to get in the rows order table region as usual and the order table category then order table sales I want to total and then I want the sum. Now I am going for the same tenth parameter which is our filter array. So here I am going to use every row I want to count available whether the row id. I am going to write this formula by row. I want to calculate by every row. Where is my array? Order table row id. Where I want to use which function? A lambda function where this lambda gets the parameter from the left hand side. Again lambda is another revolution happened in excel. So by row of order table row id apply a lambda function where the parameter I am taking it as x. This particular x I want to make the count. If subtotal of count a is number 3, I want to verify whether this x is available. We have calculated the subtotal formula. Let us verify whether it is greater than 0. If it is greater than 0, I want to give true. Otherwise, I want return false. Every row it is getting executed. And once I close this, still I am getting the same formula. Let me show you the formula for you. So this is the formula I have used. Let us bring that slicer here. So I am just cutting this slicer again. Let us put it in this sheet. Now also, without any helper column, now I can see the slicer work. Now we have learned how to use the table slicers inside the latest pivot by function by using subtotal and lambda and by row function which is not even utilizing any helper column. If you are very much happy with the adding a helper column like include as I have done, that is also okay. Thank you for being with me today. Let us meet in another video. Thank you.